last week we talked about how we're to love God with all of our hearts and how we're to love our neighbors. And neighbors are those people that God has put in our paths. It's not the people we've chosen. And also how we're to love our enemies. And when we do things like that, it makes an impact upon the world and the world is touched and they want to come into that relationship. God has called us to love one another with a powerful love. Today, I want to talk about how God wants us to encourage one another. Encourage one another. Um, some of you may say, I sure hope the pastor speaks something encouraging to me today because I need it. You know, you're here for a reason. God wants to encourage you. Matter of fact, why don't you tap someone on the shoulder next to you and say, you look like you could use some encouragement. <laughs> Prepare to be encouraged. Encouragement. It's something that every single one of us needs. We do. I mean, if you do not have encouragement, you will give up. You will give up hope. You'll give up on a whole bunch of other things. You'll give up on your family. You know, some of our families have been attacked, and, uh, and our hope has been taken away, thinking, will my family ever be healed? Will my marriage ever be healed? Will my job ever be healed? Whatever it may be, you're losing hope, and God wants to give you encouragement today. He wants to encourage his people. He loves his people, and we need it. The world needs it, and we all benefit when we have the encouragement of God in our hearts today. Hallelujah. Encouragement. Let me give you a quick definition. I don't, yeah, it's right there. The definition of this is something that gives hope. Something that gives hope. We live in a world today where hope was just stolen and sucked out from underneath him. I'm here to tell you God wants to give you hope. Something that gives hope, determination, and a confidence. We need confidence, especially Christians. We need the confidence. It also means, it comes from a French word, means to put heart into. So many times people lose heart, and they lose heart in their families. They lose heart in the situations in their life, maybe in their own health. God wants to put heart back into you, church, and he does it through encouragement. And the Bible calls us to encourage one another. That word encouragement, if you look in the Bible, and I, 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 I checked it. Every single scripture I looked up, I wanted to see this word, and it's, uh, I'm going I'm to say it wrong, but it's paracleses. And there's different forms of that word, and it's a Greek word, and that means to comfort, to lift up, to refresh, to come alongside and to strengthen one another, to encourage. And anytime we read the scriptures and we find that word, especially in the New Testament, we see the word comfort, lift up, uh, refresh, uh, uh, teach, uh, all these things. You look and you'll find there's a wonderful Bible app I go to all the time and I just type in the scripture and I say, now show me the Greek words and I go down and see the English word and I look right over there and there's a form of that word, paraclesis, and it means to encourage. God is all about encouraging people, all about it. Look at John 14, 16. This is the amplified version and it says this, and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper. See that word helper right there? You look up that word helper in the Greek word right there. That there's a form of the word periklesis. God wants to help us. He wants to encourage us. Encouragement helps us. Encouragement gives us hope. He goes, and I will give you another helper. And in the Amplified Version, it says comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, strengthener, standby. All these words right there all means encouragement. God says, I will send you a, someone who's going to give you encouragement, and that is the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of every one of us. God does not want us walking around with our heads down low, acting like we're defeated and feeling defeated. The devil will try and defeat you all the time, but we have to lift up our heads and say, Lord, you are my encouragement. You are my help. You are my strengthener. Hallelujah. From you, I receive encouragement. God is here to encourage every one of us today. Hallelujah. What, what does God do? What, how does, he wants to encourage us. Encourage you in your walk with him. He doesn't just want you to have a great day. <laughs> and God's fine with having you having a great day. So many times we talk about how I feel, how happy I am. Or God is not so much concerned about your happiness as he is about filling you with his spirit and encourage you walking with him. God will never encourage you to walk continually in your sin. And there's some Christians today who are walking in sin. They are walking and doing some things that they know is wrong. And their life is feeling it. So they look to God for encouragement. Do not expect encouragement in that area of your life where you're sinning. Amen? God loves you too much to do that. God loves you too much for you to feel comfortable in a situation that you will stay in and it will rob you and hurt you. God wants to fill you with this encouragement to follow him. God wants you to follow him. 
and he will encourage you in all kinds of ways and strengthen you in that area in your life. So, if words come into your head and you start thinking discouraging things or demeaning things or you feel down, know this, that's not God talking to you. God is an encourager. Now, let me say this. God is encouraged to your commitment, I mean, to, to encouraging you. He's committed to that, but he's not encouraging you in your sin. And when you sin, he will cause you to feel the, the, the pain of it because he loves you. Amen? Because he loves you, he allows us to feel the pain so we will come out of that. So God does not want that. God is so committed to your encouragement, he placed the Holy Spirit inside of your heart, inside of us. And he is the encourager. He strengthens you, he comforts you, and he encourages you to walk with him. Let's look at John 14, verse 26. I, did I finish that whole scripture there? Yeah, I did. Verse 26, it says this. But the helper, and once again, looked at the Greek word, paraklesis, there it is, the encourager, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance all that I have said to you. You know, sometimes when you hear someone give you an encouraging word and you hear it, and you just want to hear it again, or maybe you read it in a letter. So when you need strength and you need encouragement, you go back and you read that again and again and again. That's what God wants to do through his word. That's what God wants to do through his spirit. He wants to speak to us and encourage us through his word. The promises of God are read in the Bible. They're read in the Bible. So if you want those promises a part of your life, and if you want the Holy Spirit to bring them to remembrance in your life, be in the Bible. Amen? Give the Holy Spirit something to work with. Right? If you have nothing there, what's the Holy Spirit got to work with you? He can't. So be in the Word, church. Be in the Word. If you're feeling down, open up the Word of God. Be in the Word, and the Holy Spirit will bring that to remembrance. And He is the encourager. So I want to give you today three quick things. Three quick things about encouragement. First of all, um, encouragement is something that God does. Say that with me. Encouragement is something that God does. God is all about encouragement. Matter of fact, it's one of the ways God wants you to know him. God says, I want you to know me as an encourager. You know, so many people in the world today think God is just this vindictive God who wants to beat you and keep you in line. Get in line, get in line, get in line. That's how they perceive God, and that's how they talk about God. Matter of fact, that's how the devil puts God into our minds. But that's not true. God wants to come in and encourage us. He encourages us into these areas. He allows us to suffer some of the consequences because he loves us, but then that drives us right back to him. So God wants to encourage us today. And one of the ways he wants us to know him is a God who encourages people, who gives them strength in their heart. The devil reminds you of all your failings, doesn't he? How many of you guys ever, you don't have to raise your hand, but you, you, you go through life and, and certain day and you just remember something of your past and it just makes you feel defeated. That's the devil. That's the devil. He wants you defeated. He want, the truth is this, I got a secret for you. He's defeated. <laughs> And we need to live like he's defeated one and we're the victorious one. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So the devil reminds us of our failings. The world doesn't know how good God is. They just don't know how good God is. And I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of Christians who really do not know how good God is. Because we thought of him in the wrong way. Because we're so discouraged about other things, we think of him as wrong. I'm here to tell you, God does not, God wants his people to know he loves them. God wants it. And when you know that someone loves you, that gives you strength. That gives you a lecture, oomph, that takes you and carries you further and further and further. That God wants you to know how good he is and how much he wants to bless you and how good he wants to be to your life and in your family's life. He wants you to know that so you will remain faithful to him and so you will remain strong in the faith of God. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, 4 says this, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and, say it with me, the God of all comfort. Again, you look up that word comfort there. It's a form of the word paraclesis. God wants to encourage you. He, how does God comfort us? He encourages us. He encourages us. Um, even when God convicts us, it's an encouragement for us to do what is right. Amen? The Holy Spirit will convict you when you do wrong. And that's good. That means you're still alive. That means you've not seared your conscience and caused you to not hear the voice of God. When you feel convicted, it draws you back to Jesus Christ. But when you feel condemned, and it's like you're never going to be any good, you're never going to be any good, that's not God, that's the devil. But when God says you've sinned, come home, say you're sorry, come back to me, that is good. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do to us today. 
Uh, in 2 Corinthians 1, 3, it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all encouragement. So now I'm going to put in there, I'm going to put in all the words where the Periclesis word was, and you're going to see just how amazing this encouragement is. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all encouragement, who encourages us in all of our afflictions. You know, in every one of your difficult times, God wants to be there to encourage you. Do you know that? He's not gone. He's not far away. If we call out to him, say, Lord, I need your encouragement in my life today, he's there. God's not saying, I don't care about you. God's not saying, I'm not going to help you. No, it tells us right here that he is the God of encouragement and who encourages us, us in all of our affliction. He doesn't encourage us like that, but he does encourage us a lot. Amen? That's so much that he causes us to say, that's God, okay? Praise the Lord. So he encourages us in all of our afflictions. And also it goes on to say, so that we may be able to, what? Encourage those who are in affliction also. See, God encourages us so that we can also be an encouragement to those around us. Amen? God gives us strength so that we can give strength to other people. It's not that just you and God and that's it. We are part of something else called one another. We're part of something else where we encourage one another and we help one another. And God wants you to do that. So he encourages you so that you can be an encouragement to the world around you as well. And then it goes on to say, matter of fact, matter of fact in Ephesians 5.1, it says that we are to be imitators of God. So when God encourages, we are to what? Encourage. When God encourages, we are to what? You learn to encourage others as well. To trust in the Lord. You got a hard situation? Trust in the Lord. This is what he's done for me. This is how he walked me through it. This is where he gave me victory. Encourage other people as well. Hallelujah. And with the encouragement with which we ourselves are encouraged by God. So, my goodness, we have a God who is an encourager, and he wants us to know him as our great encourager. Be encouraged. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Today, God wants to encourage you in these ways. He wants to encourage you to say, I love you, child. I've adopted you. I've not forgotten about you. I love you. Let me encourage you that I love you. He wants to encourage you that I'm with you. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. You feel like I'm gone. Well, that's a lie of the devil, and that's your emotions. I'm here. I'm here. I'll allow you to go through the fire, but I'll walk with you in the fire. Amen? Hallelujah. He wants to encourage us that he is for us, and he's not against us. Say, my God, my God. is for me. Boy. Hallelujah. Know that. And God wants you to know that. And again, so many times Christians feel, especially in a religious setting, that God is against them. God wants to encourage us that he has a purpose for you. You know, you got a purpose. You're just not here just to take up space and have bad breath, okay? You're not just here to make our breath. You know, God's, here, God's put you here for a purpose, and he wants you to know it. He wants you to walk in that purpose, amen? Boy, I, I'm loving you, Terry. Your preaching is awesome. Let's keep going. He has power to change your circum circumstances. God wants to encourage you. I've got power to change your circumstances. We have to know that. And we have to believe it. And we have to pray that way too. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, in that. All right, the second thing today. First of all, God wants us to know, number one, that encouragement is something that he does. And he wants to do in our lives continuously. Number two, encouragement is the purpose behind God's word. And God's word means the Bible, just in case. Nothing... Not only is God encouraging, but his words are encouraging. How, what's the best way to encourage people? With words. With words of encouragement. With uh, actions as well. But words, words. The Bible is full of words that will encourage you if we are into the word of God. Again, lots of people say, I don't understand it. That's the lie of the devil. He doesn't want you to understand it. You have been made alive. You have the spirit of God in you who leads you into all truths. You are alive. Now his word is alive in you as well. So it can, you can understand it. If you have difficult, get with a group of people and do a Bible study. Do a small group with other people in the church. Open up, get a Bible that has a different translation. I know someone who's selling some really neat Bibles right over there, okay? And you can color in this one. So anyway, not only is God encouraging, but his words are encouraging as well. That's why every believer should make a priority of being in the word every day. You need encouragement? Be in the word. Are you, listen, listen to me. Are you down? Are you out? Are you discouraged? Open the Bible. See, the Bible, God, the devil 
one of those three, and it's the devil, okay? Uh, the devil, he will do everything he can to discourage you from opening your Bible. Man, it's just the opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. That's like going up to someone who's sick and giving them the medicine, but discouraging them from taking the medicine. They can't get well. You want to be encouraged? So many times we look for other people to encourage us. God says, you encourage yourself by being in my word. Isn't that amazing? Our God's thought of everything. He's pretty smart. Amen? Amen. So God wants us to be in his word. And when we're in the word, it will encourage us. And one of the best ways to read the word, walk around, read it out loud to yourself. Read it out loud. You know, I have trouble with the names. Skip the names. Go on to where God wants to encourage you. Go on to other areas. You will learn. You will grow. But read the word of God out loud, and you will encourage yourself. You will encourage yourself. Hallelujah. And not the, the whole world's not going to be there to encourage you. Matter of fact, you may be in a situation that you're not going to be encouraged. No one's going to be there, and you're going to have to encourage yourself. And God says, I've given you everything, and my spirit's inside of you, and he is a spirit of encouragement. Hallelujah. Reading the word of God. As you read it, read it out loud. You're built up. The word of God encourages our heart. It strengthens us. And God has many things he wants to encourage us with. Look at Romans 14. I'm sorry, Romans 15, 4. It says this. For whatever was written in the former days, it's talking about in Bible times, was written for our instructions, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Have you lost your hope? Have you lost your hope in your marriage? Have you lost your hope in your children? Have you lost your hope in your job? Have you lost hope in your health? Where the devil has come and stole your hope, you can be encouraged and God will fill that, give you hope back again. He's a God of all hope. He's a God of all encouragement. Amen? Say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. So I need to be, so if you're saying I need to be encouraged today, open up the Bible, read it out loud. Let me give you an example. Timothy, uh, one time he was pastoring a church and this church, I believe it was in Antioch, it was, it was discouraging to him. He felt like quitting. He felt like giving up. And so Paul wrote him a letter to encourage him. And here's what he said. And uh, the people were hating on him. The people were arguing. There was fractions going on. And so Paul gave him some advice. And he was feeling uh, down. He was feeling divided. And so he's about to lose heart. And Paul says, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of the scriptures, to exhorting, to teaching. So that word exhorting right there. You look it up, it's a form of the word paraclesis, encouragement. So until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scriptures. Why? So that it can encourage you. It can exhort you and also will teach. And if you look at that, that's the ES version. The NIV version says this, uh, the preaching. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of the scriptures, to the preaching, which is another form of encouragement. We come together today to hear preaching that will lift us up and to trust God and to be encouraged in God and encouraged and trusting in his word. So preaching encourages people. Be a preacher. Preach to your kids. My kids used to say all the time, Dad, you're preaching again. Yes, because you haven't got it yet. Okay? Just preach to them. Mom and Dad, preach to your kids. Okay? Hallelujah. And when you do, you're encouraging them to trust the Lord. When you look at the, NL, the New Living Translation, it says this, until you get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. All these were forms of that same word, the paraclesis. And when you look at that, God wants to encourage his church. Because without courage, we quit. Without encouragement, we stop. Without encouragement, we just wither up and we die. We need encouragement, and God knows that. And one of the greatest places to have it, number one, God wants us to know him as our encourager, and he encourages us through his word, through the Bible, the holy word of God. And it's encouraging to us. So devote yourself to encouragement. Devote yourself to come alongside and strengthen others as well. Hallelujah. And devote yourself to encouragement. It will change people's lives. It will change people's lives. Let me give you a quick testimony here. Sierra Poff. Uh, she's a young lady. Where is she at? She's on a camera. Hi, Sierra Poff, right over there. <laughs> this is a young, shy, beautiful, quiet girl. But she had this burning within her to wanted to share the gospel with her friends. Matter of fact, her friends noticed something within her so much that they would ask her, what does this mean? Could you explain this to me? And so what does she do? Without uh, fanfare, without uh, big show, she started a Bible study at her school. Slow starting. 
And she's been, by the way, she's been trained and she's been prepared and she's been discipled by Pastor Desmond on how to open up the Bible and how to read it and how to share. And because she's been discipled so well, she now can go and disciple the people in the schools where she's at. And so this is girl, even though it's slow starting, we need to pray for her at the end of the service, lay hands on her and just say, Lord, bless what you're doing in that school right there. Triton School, is it? All right, Triton School. And you watch. I ask her, I say, how's it going? You know, how's it going? She goes, some of my friends come, some don't. Praise the Lord, you're making a difference. You are doing more positive things than half the church. <laughs> That's what's happening. Praise the Lord. Church, you are going to be encouragers. You're going to be preachers of the word. You're going to be openers, sharing the word with people around you. Because you are a child of God. And you're created to do the good works. And we're created to be in the image of Jesus. And we're to do the same things that Jesus has done. We're to be encouragers. And she's encouraging people. What is she encouraging them? Not just have a better day. Not just have a better life in this world right now. She's encouraging them to follow Jesus Christ and to trust him as their Lord and Savior in every circumstances in their life. And they're walking it. They're going to walk in it. Just as revival is happening in the prisons, revival is happening in the schools, and it's going to happen everywhere when God's people take an initiative and they impact the world around them by doing the things God's called them to do. Do these things, church, and watch what you do. Amen? Uh, there's also a reason you need to be in church. That's another reason why we need to be in church, because we encourage one another. How, I, 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 you have no idea how encouraged I am that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys encourage each other. The teaching that we have, whether it be in the Sunday school, whether hopefully in the preaching here as well, it encourages us to go after God with all of our heart, to lay aside the sins of the world, to lay aside the deeds of the flesh, and to walk in the Spirit. I encourage you to walk in the Spirit and to trust the Lord and to give up the lifestyle of the world. Amen? That's the type of encouragement God wants from His people and from His church. And so we do that, and God will see, watch God move, watch revival happen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I will, Pastor Desmond. You and I. Let's go, brother. Encouragement makes a difference. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God wants us to know him as our encourager. And the word of God also is uh, one of the ways he encourages. Number three and the last one is this. Encouragement can change people's outlook on life. It can totally change people's outlook on life. It can change the direction of their life. You have not, listen to me. You encourage someone in the Lord and you encourage them at a certain time where the devil has just been beaten up on them and beaten up on them and then the Holy Spirit leads you to encourage them. You change the direction of that ship which was headed towards the shore and ready to crash. You change them and it gives them life. And God wants you to know that. You don't have to know someone to encourage them. Can I tell you that right now? You don't have to know everyone on the front row to encourage them. You, can know, you don't have to know anyone anywhere. You don't have to know a, 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 a person who's not even a Christian. Everywhere you go, you can encourage someone. As a matter of fact, no one is ever offended when you try to encourage them. No one. <laughs> You're, you encouraged me. Get away from me. You, you don't, don't see that. Amen? You're, you'll never offend someone when you encourage them. And you don't have to know them to encourage them. We're to be encouraging people everywhere we went. Look at Jesus. Think of all the places he went and all the people he touched. He didn't know those people by name, and they didn't know him. But yet he was such an encouragement to them. Hallelujah. God's going to use you in that way, church. God's going to use you in that way. Amen? amen. And those who said amen are going to live it. Hallelujah. So I'll give you another chance. Amen. God's going to use you, church. Amen? amen? Oh, good. So you want to be used. All right. Praise the Lord. Everyone needs encouragement. Everyone benefits from encouragement, even if you don't know them. When you encourage someone in the Lord, you're building their faith. You're building them to trust God in circumstances which seems lost. You're encouraging them to trust Jesus instead of following their emotions and following what the devil wants them to do. You're encouraging them to trust the Lord in those areas. You're helping others discover God's grace in their life. Oh, you guys have no idea how wonderful the grace of God is. We were headed for hell. And God gave us favor undeserved, unearned, unmerited favor. The grace of God is for us, and it's for the world today, and they need to know that, and we encourage them in that. Not only that, church, when you encourage other people, you help them to discover the gifts that God has placed in their hearts. They say, yes, I want to walk in that. You know, there's some people you can go up to and say, man, what you are doing here in this class, you, the way you taught this class 
made me understand it in such a way that I, I never really understood it that way. Thank you. You know, you're encouraging them to continue in that. You're encouraging them to grow in their giftings that God has given them. Man, you're, the way you lead worship up there, the way you teach my children, the way that you greet me at the door, you have no idea. I came in here with such a down countenance and so feel, feeling defeated and feeling upset. But your smile and your hug and your welcome, it encouraged me. It encouraged me. So now I can walk in here and I can worship God. And I can lift up my hands and throw off the world and enter into the presence of God who encourages me even more. Amen? You guys can make a difference. You can change the, the direction of someone's ship in their lives. Amen? Hallelujah. You build their faith. You help them to discover God's grace. You help them to discover the gifts in their life. Encouraging others makes a difference in their walk with God. Hallelujah. And it can also build the church. And one of the greatest places to be encouraged is to come to church and be encouraged. Don't neglect it. The Word of God says do not neglect the gathering together, as some have gotten in the habit of doing. Come. Be encouraged. Man, when you're outside of the church and you're outside of the, the influence of everyone else encouraging you, when you're outside of that, there's a tendency to slip. There's a tendency to slip. But when you're around other people, annoying godly people <laughs> who encourage you, man, you know, praise the Lord, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on this prayer. I'm not giving up on this believing what God has said in this situation. I'm going to proclaim this truth again and again and again and again. Amen? Hallelujah. Encourage one another. Uh, let me give you an example. This is found in Acts 4.36. For instance, there was Joseph, one of the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. There is a man by the name of Joseph that he was such an encouragement to the church and to the people in the church. They go, look at him. There's Mr. Encouragement right there. There's Mr. Encouragement. Man, he makes me feel so good. Not just good, but he makes me trust God. He makes me want to go after God with all my heart. When I saw a missionary just talking about the goodness of God and the grace of God and the power of God, man, that just encouraged me to go after God and just surrender and say, I lay down all the rest of this world. I go after you, God. And it just, man, it changed my heart, changed the direction of my life, all because of an encouragement of some guy talking about the goodness of God. Joseph here, Barnabas, no, uh, nicknamed Barnabas, was a son of encouragement. Matter of fact, in Acts 11, <clears throat> uh, this, I, I made a mistake before, but this is the church in Antioch I'm talking about. In Acts 11, they heard what God was doing over there, at the church in Jerusalem. They heard about it. They said, man, we've we got to strengthen that church. God is moving over there. Can you believe that? This, this is a, a Roman city. This is a Roman place, and a church is there, and God is doing great things. Let's send someone over there to encourage them to be in the word of God and be in faith. Who shall we send? Mr. Encouragement. <laughs> so they grab a hold of Barnabas. They said, Barnabas, we want to send you over there. And he goes over there and he encourages them in their faith. And what does the scripture say right after that? That God added to their numbers daily. When people are encouraged to trust God, the numbers, revival happens. Church, let's be an encouragement. Let's see what God can do. Let's see God add to our numbers here today. Let's, let's fill our, this faith with the hope and the trust of God in our lives and let people see it. So, uh, he encouraged them to stay true to the Lord, and the church grew. You don't have to know someone to encourage them. You don't have to know that waitress. You don't know, have, have to know the people who are serving you. You don't have to know the person sitting next to you someplace when you're traveling. You don't have to know them to encourage them. Be an encouragement. Let God use you. Let God use you to encourage them, because God is an encouraging God, and he wants to encourage those around us. Hallelujah. All around us are people who are fighting battles that we don't know anything about. We, everywhere. You have no idea. And they're fighting battles. They're struggling. They're losing hope. They're discouraged. They're losing heart. And so God wants us to put heart back into them. And they're, even they're suicidal. You have no idea what you could do just by through a word of encouragement and praying for people and trusting the Lord in the situation. Be led by the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to know them. And you could change the course of their life. Hallelujah. When, you, when can you encourage? You encourage all the time. You can encourage people every single day of your life. Your spouse, let me start right there. Encourage your spouse. Don't save encouragement for the rest of the world. Start with your home. Start with your family. Start with your spouse. Encourage them. Thank them for what they do for you. Uh, brag on them. I'm serious. You think, ah, that's kid stuff. Well, give me the kid stuff. 
Give me the kid stuff. It'll be like children when we come to God. Encourage your family. Encourage your children. Encourage them to follow the Lord. What Lisa Fear has offered to you guys, if you have children, take that and do the small group with them. Do a, a devotion time with them. Encourage them in the Lord because the world will not encourage them. They will encourage them to walk away from God. They will encourage them to say, well, the Bible is really not real. It's fictitious. It's full of fairy tales. It's not true. They will encourage them to walk away from their faith. They will encourage them to walk away from what they really felt in their heart. That's what the devil wants to do. Matter of fact, let me give you a scripture that kind of goes along with that. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll save that for later. It's a good one. I'm almost done. Say, thank you, Terry. <clears throat> you can encourage anyone, anytime, anywhere, and you don't have to know them, but start with your spouse, start with your uh, children, and watch make a difference in their lives. It's a powerful opportunity for them to hear the voice of God. Because when you're encouraged, you sound like Jesus Christ. When you encourage people, you sound like God because he's an encourager. The goal is this. Think of something encouraging to say to someone today. Think of something to say encouraging. Don't put it off. Don't think, I know, I'll write a letter. But this letter is going to be perfect, so I'm going to sit down and work on it and work on it and work on it. And then, boom, it never goes anywhere. Or I'm going to send this text and, you know, I, I'll think, I, I, let me think of something really. Just take the simple things and start encouraging. Be an encourager and watch what God uses you and he'll grow you in your ability to encourage people as well. Hallelujah. So as soon as you think of it, say it. Amen? You guys are good looking. I thought of it just right away. You, I want to encourage you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews 3.13 says this, but encourage one another daily. Say daily. daily. This is to be a habit. This is a habit. You know you have to build a habit to make a habit? A habit? Amen? <laughs> I'll stop right there because I can't think of anything. Make it a habit. Encourage each other daily. Did, uh, go to the next scripture if you would, please. Did I miss something already? Yeah, there it is. Encourage one another daily. So guys, this is something we just don't do one day at the beginning of the week and we just go, oh, I'll go back to church and he'll tell me the next thing to do. No! I'm telling you right now, every single day, find someone to encourage. Start with your family. Encourage them in the Lord. Bless them. Pray for them. Lay hands upon them. Hallelujah. Watch what happens. Now go out into the world and bless your boss. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> encourage them. Encourage them. Encourage those workers around you. Brag on them, whatever it may be. But the main thing is this. Encourage them in the Lord. So you know God loves you. I mean, you may not know this. But God really loves you, and he wants to see you out of this situation that you feel so lost and trapped in. Can I pray for you? Boom, encouragement. When you pray for people, you encourage them. And, but encourage one another daily, and as long as it's called today. Is it called today? So we're to do it whenever it's called today. Is it going to be today, tomorrow? Yeah, <laughs> whenever it's called today, encourage someone, find someone. Don't put it off. Don't wait for a better time. Do it now. Today is the day. It's, matter of fact, this is an urgent, look at that. It's in parentheses. This is the Holy Spirit urging us, do it. This is the Holy Spirit urging us, do it. This is important. Do it today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So what does it mean there? We live in the world where sin tears us down. Matter of fact, I want to say this. Sin wants to corrupt you. Sin wants to ruin you. Sin wants to destroy you. Sin wants to diminish you, make you less than what God has created. Listen, look at me. Sin wants to diminish you and destroy who you are. Sin wants to weaken you in your life. Sin wants to do all these things. Sin wants to make people think that God doesn't care. That's what sin wants to do. Sin wants people uh, to make them want to give up. And there's no reason for hope. There's no reason to live. There's no reason for life. That sin wants people to doubt God, doubt him in his goodness, doubt him in his power, doubt him in his will, and that he cares for us. That's what sin wants to do. And so that's why it says right there, as long as it's called today, encourage one another daily. Why? So that uh, they may not be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Because every single day, sin is deceiving people. Sin is trying to best to deceive you and I, believer. Did you know that? The devil has not given up on you. <laughs> that, that's not good news. The devil has not given up on you. But praise the Lord, neither is God. 
And greater is he who's in me than he's in the world. Amen? If God cares, then why? If God cares, then why is there pain in the world? If God cares, why is there suffering? Today we learned during our Sunday school class that sometimes God uses those hard times to bring people to him. Because if we continue walking on in our life that's away from God and those hard times don't come, we'll never turn to God. God loves us so much that he allows hard times in our lives. Say thank you, God. Amen. Amen. God loves us so much he allows difficult times in our lives to draw us back to him. Hallelujah. But if God cares, so that's one of the ways you can talk to people as well. But encourage one another daily because sin is working every day, so we should too as well. Jimmy, if you would, please. Sin is working every day, and we should be working as well. Encourage one another daily. So let's read that whole thing again. But encourage one another daily as long as it is today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But encourage one another daily. I'll give you a couple more verses that let you emphasize that. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says this. So encourage, periclesis, each other and build each other up. Build each other up. Hallelujah. It does me just as you always are always doing. Do it like you're always doing. So this is something that we're supposed to be doing continuously. Continuously. It's a daily habit. But encourage one another just like you've always been doing it. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't slow down. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's what this is saying right here. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10.25 says this. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now. Especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Man, today is a day that people need encouragement like none other. Today is a day people need. They need to know, live for Jesus because he's coming back. Believer, you're saved. Hallelujah. Now live for Jesus so you will not be ashamed of how you lived your life when you stand before God. Live for Jesus. He's coming back. It's sooner. Get your family in church. Live for Jesus. Let me encourage you to get your family in church because Jesus is coming back. And then there's no other chance. None. Get your family in church. Be about the word of God. Let me encourage you to trust the Lord in all these areas. Let me encourage you to lay down all the sins and the habits that you have and go after God with all of your heart and watch what he does in your life. Let me encourage you to do that. And God is going to do great things through you. Hallelujah. Your day of rest is coming, but it's not today. Your day is coming. I just made it up. But your day is coming. A day of rest is coming, but it's not today. Hashtag worthy. Oh, is that part of that? Okay, yeah, they've got that in their class. Apparently, that's in their Sunday school class. Tell people you're glad you came to church. Tell them. Say, I'm glad you're here. You know, some people, they come to church, and they never get a greeting, or they never get a welcome. I, and I don't think that happens here. I don't think it happens here at all. You guys are good at it. Let's get better. Let's get better. Let's make people not want to leave the church building. Say, can I follow you home? <laughs> Let's make people want to follow you home. Love on them. Encourage them. Say, I am so glad that you're here. I'm so glad to see you with your children. You brought your kids. Man, Hallelujah. You want to encourage people to be in the church. You want to build them up, build them up. You want them to experience life, experience strength, renewal in their hearts, and experience the presence and the grace of God. Let me encourage you at worship time. And maybe I'm not the best encourager, but I want to get better. Amen? How about you? I want to get better. And sometimes my encouragement comes along as like prodding, and I, I need to get better at that. But let me encourage you, when we worship God, to focus on Him alone. Let me encourage you to take your hands out of your pocket and off that and just surrender to God and watch what happens. It's not because we want to look around and say, oh, wow, look at that. That's cool. That's not it. Because when we surrender to God, then God can do great things in our lives. Then God can move in the areas of our lives and bring healing where we surrendered. If we never surrendered that and we hold it, God can't come in and touch and do deliverance and do healing and do restoring and, and push us out to do great things. So hallelujah. Encourage people all the time. Tell people you love them. Proverbs 10, 21, and the first part says this, and this is the New Living Translation. It says, the words of the godly encourage many. Be an imitator of Jesus. Encourage many. If you look at the NIV, it says this, the lips of the righteous nourish many. Nourish many. How many of you guys like meat? 
All right. We don't have a church full of vegans. Praise the Lord. All right. I like, I like meat. I love a good steak. Um, I was asking some of the staff, I go, what's your favorite? I was asking Lisa Fear because her husband does steak, uh, does cow, whatever it is you do. <laughs> and uh, he's, that's where the beef is, right there. But uh, I said, what is your favorite? She goes, uh, what was it that you said? Prime rib. Prime rib is her favorite. How many of you guys are prime rib people? Christian, when you're setting something out before someone, set out the very best. Give them encouragement. Don't tell them where you see God lacking in their life. Let the Holy Spirit do that. Let the preacher do that. But tell them where you see, I see God moving your life. I see where you are a, such a good mom. You're such a good mom the way you take care. Number one, the way you dress your kids, they're beautiful. The way you take care of them, and it's a, it's a hard struggle. Maybe you're by yourself. But the way you're raising your kids to trust the Lord, you are a good mom. Amen? You're a good dad. Some people need to hear that. Um, you're an encouragement to me that you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I am glad you're here. I look for you every Sunday, and I, I'm good to see you here. And when you see people out in the street, one of the greatest things, especially kids, listen, when you go to school and you see another believer in school, man, <sighs> Um, you walk up to him and say, man, praise the Lord. Give him a high five. Say, God is with you, mighty man of God. God is with you, mighty woman of God. You, you look great. You, whatever it may be, encourage them in the Lord, especially at school where it just suck, tries to suck it out of them. At work, some of you guys are at places where uh, the joy suckers abound plenty. You know what I'm talking about? Remember Pastor Dan talked about the joy suckers? Those people who just suck the life out of everything, the goodness out of everything. Let you be a joy supplier. Be an encourager. People need that. And you watch. People will be attracted and gravitate towards you than they will those who are sucking the life out of them. And then you have an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and the goodness of God in their life. You will encourage them to look to Jesus for their encouragement. You encourage them to look to Jesus for their heart that's broken. You encourage Jesus in their prayers when you pray with them. You encourage them to be drawn to Jesus and they will be saved all because of your encouragement. Barnabases, amen? We need a Barnabas club, amen? Yeah. Not the Barney club. Oh, I love you. Don't forget that. <clears throat> so today, the lips of the righteous nourish many. Let the words that come out of your mouth nourish people. And draw them to the Lord. Hallelujah. When we speak godly encouragement, it's like giving them prime rib. Hallelujah. Lord, let me speak the words of nourishment to people all around me. Encouragement is not an option. It's a command. And we sound just like Jesus when we encourage those who are around us. Amen? Let's pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, thank you for encouraging us. Thank you that you're God who forgives. And there's people here today that need to know that you want to forgive. You want to forgive. You want to come in and bring healing in their lives. Let me encourage you, church, today, if that is you, God loves you. God will never give up on you. God will never give up on you. He's reaching to you all the time. Surrender to Jesus and say, Lord, I surrender to you. And if there's areas of my life that are not right and I'm living in sin, I repent. And I'm sorry. I want to be encouraged by you. I want to be strengthened by you. I want to sense your presence in my life. I want to receive the encouragement from others. And I want to be a son or a daughter of encouragement to them as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As, as you guys are still praying right now, I just I want to give an opportunity. There may be some here today that says, you know what, Pastor Terry, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to make my heart right with him. And I want the promises of God, and I want to walk in that with the confidence that he loves me and walk in that, that I'm going to be and go to heaven when Jesus comes to get me. And I want to be a part of that. If that's you today, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and know that you are saved because God wants to save you, raise your hand and receive Jesus today if that's you. 
All right, I always want to make sure. There might be some watching on the internet. I want you to know God loves you, and you're watching this for a reason because he wants to encourage you to trust him for your salvation. Quit trying to be good. Quit trying to earn your way into heaven. You can't do it. It will never happen. But God is here to give you his righteousness so that you can be in heaven, so that you can spend eternity with him. And that's why he came. So I encourage you today to call out on Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive me for my sins. Thank you that you love me. I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve your grace. But God, you offer it and I receive it. Thank you. I'm yours. I belong to you. I declare that today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We hope you've enjoyed today's message. If you have made a decision to accept Christ as your Savior or in need of prayer, we would like to hear from you. Please contact us at either 574-223-7631 or email us at admin at faithoutreach.cc. For further information on our church, go to our website at www.faithoutreach.cc or like us on Facebook. Either way, you will find information on upcoming events, archived sermons, who we are, as well as other activities going on here at Faith Outreach Center. On behalf of Faith Outreach Center, this is Roger Vogel saying, God bless and thanks for listening. Thank you.